Welcome to the MMA Kill Shot Podcast from DFS Army. I'm Sniper. That's Monk. We are going to talk the card that is Armin Sarukian versus Benil Dariush. Got our week off. We are back. Co-main event, Bobby Green, Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner looks like death on wheels heading into this co-main event, but he made weight. The fight is on, and our guy Monk is going to go is going to the fights. He will be there live and in living color. So, I mean, you're going to have have the fire breakdown for us, I, I would assume, of course. What's going on, Monk? Not too much yet. Definitely looking forward to this card for those reasons more than others. Uh, so I'm going to make the road trip down about two and a half hours from old Fort Worth. Uh, looking forward to it. Some really good, uh, really good car uh, fighters on this card. Looking forward to Figgy stepping up. Obviously, the main event. Um, you know, Dustin Stolzfus, maybe not so much. Uh, maybe the Tate Avila fight, maybe not so much. But there's some banger uh, prelims too. So uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be a good one. And any card compared to next week is an absolute banger. So we got three cards left. Two of them are really good. Uh, well, you know. We got the pay-per-view, a decent card, and then next week. Yep. So I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> All right, so we're going to break it down, talk draft, kings, talk bet, talk betting. Do me a favor, hit that like button for me. Make sure you drop a comment in with what you think. We're, you know, How do you think we're doing? Are we doing good? Do we suck? You're going to come here after the fight, tell us how bad we are. There do whatever go. you got to do, but drop a comment there. And I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. I've been sick pretty much all week. We bumped this from Thursday to Friday. I'm going to try and hit the mute button every time I got a cough. I'm going to try and not look ridiculous. I'm going to try and not sound ridiculous, although I, I feel like I don't sound like myself. But we're going to talk fights. Just thanks for bearing with us. And let's go ahead. Let's, let's dive right in today. Boys and girls, let's talk main event. Let us, let us talk the fight that I, I mean, I just told you. Benil Dariush and Armin Sarukian. Sarukian's the favorite. He's 9,200 on DraftKings. Dariush is 7,000. On good old DK, just realized my other window. I have DraftKings open. I didn't open up Fight Odds yet, hmm. but it's open. I stalled long enough. And Sarukian is minus two ninety. The comeback on Dariush is plus two thirty five. And Monk, I'm gonna try and make you go first. Maybe a couple more times than usual today. What you got? No worries there. Yeah, a banger of a main event here. Um, Sarukian and Dariush. I think a lot of people are down on Dariush. Uh, because of how he looked against Charles Oliveira, never really got anything going, and he was dispatched in under five minutes. Um, but I guess people have short memories because before that, he was on a seven, eight, nine fight win streak. I don't even know, but he beat Mateusz Gamrot, who is uh, you know shooting his way towards the top of the division. Um, Armin Sarukian, meanwhile, in his last fight, fought uh, Joaquim Silva also on this card on short notice. And yeah, if you just look at the stats and the points he scored, it was an ass beaten. But if you actually watch the fight, you know, we've gone, we've talked about Diego Lopez having moments against Mavzar Evloev. Same thing. You look at the stats, it shows one thing. But if you actually watch the fights, Silva staggered Sarukian. He was on him in the second round until Sarukian turned it around in the third. So, uh, yeah, there are holes in the game of Sarukian. There's holes in the game of Dariush as well. But I don't think Dariush is as spent as everyone uh, thinks he is. This number would have me assume that Dariush is completely washed. And he is 34 years old, guys. That's it. He is not an old guy. Uh, he might have some some gray in his hair, a little salt and pepper, but he is not an old fighter. And I think he's, he's had vastly forever. more vastly more experienced than Sarukian. Yeah, Sarukian, if he wins, he's probably the next big thing. But I think Dariush is a much, much bigger than a speed bump, which is what a lot of people would uh would make you think. So as far as DFS goes, I'm playing a, you know more Dariush than probably the field. But I also like Saruki in here. Bottom line is I think the winner scores well in what should be a round four or five finish or a, a five-round decision. All right, for me, I, my pick is going to be Armin Sarukian, but the line is too wide for me. I think the value is on the Benny Darius side. I Darius is relatively hard to take down and keep down, and I think Benny's probably the better striker. Um, and he's got some power in his hands. We've seen it before. He can get stung, but I do think that while Benny's hard to take down, I don't think it's impossible. And I think Armin is going to have use enough of that wrestling and kind of that pressure style that it's going to wear down Benil Dariush. And as the fight gets later, I think Armin will take over. That being said, Dariush is plenty live in this fight. I don't like how how wide it is. How wide it is. 
Um, so my pick is my pick is Suruki. I think the wrestling will come through here. I just I wouldn't bet it. I think betting is the value side. And on DraftKings, I probably stack it up and play both. Stack it up in cash games. I think is fine. Play both sides in GPPs. There's enough other fights to avoid. Um, that 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 is how I would attack this fight. Let's move on to the co-main event, which I referenced earlier. Bobby Green, Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner's 8,900. Bobby Green is 7,600. On DraftKings, go odds-wise. Jalen Turner's minus 185. Bobby Green is plus 150. A lot of people on Bobby Green. I've seen a plenty of people pick him. And I wasn't totally on board before Jalen Turner looked like shit for this... Um, <laughs> On this weight cut. Took him two tries to make 156. Um, did not look good on the scales. In terms of the fight breakdown though. How Turner looked has me more on this fight than I was going to be. Because honestly I thought the range of Turner was going to be the big difference here. Turner's long for this weight class. I thought Bobby Green was going to. I still think Bobby Green's going to have trouble closing the distance in this, in this striking contest. Um, the problem is when you cut weight like. And you cut weight like Jalen Turner did. I'm worried about the chin. I'm worried about the cardio holding up. And now I think Bobby Green might be able to take over down the um, stretch. I'm going to stay with my original pick, which was Jalen Turner. Um, and being able to use that distance, keep it, and win a decision. But as I, the reasons I already outlined, I'm going to have more Bobby Green than I was planning on on Wednesday. So for me, it's still Jalen Turner, but there are concerns now. Monk, how about for you? Yeah, it's Jalen Turner. Uh, he always looks like this when he gets on the scale. This is a constant it thing. Looked, that it looked real bad today at uh, at one fifty five. Um, Bobby Green. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm probably going into this one the same as I would pre weigh ins, which is I'm playing both sides. Jalen Turner's got eight weapons that he can hit you with, like Dalsum from anywhere uh, on the canvas. While Bobby Green, we know what he can do if he can get inside of Jalen Turner's reach then uh he's got a chance and that's just what it is uh we have seen both guys get cracked recently um so that is uh that's always on the back of my mind we do have a nine year age difference which no one seems to be talking about um and for good reason because bobby green's looked you know as good as ever lately um in the no contest and then the ferguson win and the dawson win um jalen turner not the best record 13 and 7 but his last two losses guys dan hooker and mateus gamrot two damn good fighters so Honestly, I'm picking Turner. Wouldn't be surprised if Green got it done. I like both for GPP games. For cash games, if you're going to make me choose, I'm going to pick Turner. But uh, I don't mind, I guess, a little Bobby Green. But I prefer this fight for GPPs for sure. Of course, we're going to make you pick. Make you yeah. uncomfortable. Because we're going to make you make a pick, and then when you miss, we're going to fucking light you on fire. Exactly. <laughs> How dare you miss a pick. <laughs> Move it on. Fight I'm really looking forward to. And I thought I was going to have a hot take on, but not so much. Rob Font, 8,800, taking on Davison and Figueredo at 7,400. Rob Font, minus 130. Figueredo, minus, plus 110. So there's odds value on Figueredo. The line has closed since the open. Monk, who you got? Yeah, I'm thinking the underdog, to be honest, which is odd because he's the one moving up a weight class, Davison Figueredo. Yeah. Um. Honestly, if this was a five-round fight, I would stack it nine out of ten times, to be completely honest. Uh, but it's not. It's only three rounds, so I'm not too interested in the stack there. Uh, fig both, I think, really, either guy could look minus 400, minus 500 in this fight, and either guy could come away with triple-digit score. So I really want to play both guys in GPPs. As far as cash goes, I don't want to touch it at all. I guess if you need a low... That's not true. Not at There's all. There's some value on Figgy. I, I'd play it's, Figgy. Yeah. I'd play Figgy at 74 for cash, but I really wouldn't touch Rob Font. He's too up or down, man. I You just never know what we're going to get um, with Font. I love rooting for the guy. I love watching him fight for the most part, but uh, we never know what we're going to get. So Figgy at 135 could be a different animal. Who knows? I don't like that he's fought no one but Brandon Moreno since like 20, you know, 2005 basically um so that is a concern for me but i'm gonna take the underdog here and i'm gonna pick davis and figueredo um outright on this one i think it goes all three but uh figgy man i want to see what he's like at 135 <laughs> yeah i i was i'm picking figueredo and i was i was thinking i was going to be relatively alone but the line is closed that way he's going to be 
rel- relatively high owned. Um, I do like him in cash games. Why do I like Davis and Figueredo? Let's don't get it twisted, by the way. Figueredo isn't going to be a small 135er. He's up at 135 because he was going to just start cutting limbs off to make to make 25. Yeah. <laughs> like an enormous dude. He'll probably fare better. The cardio will probably fare better. Uh, Rob Font, we've seen him get hit and hurt. We've seen we've seen holes in his game. We've seen we've seen he can get taken down. Figueredo can hurt him. He can wrestle here. Rob Font. Better technical boxer, sure. I just I think Figueroa's got plenty of paths here. I like the um, the ownership's going to be a little bit higher on Figueroa than I would like, but the salary is good. There's a couple of dogs I do like here. You're about to hear me say uh, quite a, quite a few dogs. Kind of, I'm not sure in a row. I'm, I'm looking at everything in salary order. Uh, th- there's a few options in this range, but I do think Figueroa has the highest ceiling of those options. So. Yeah, I, I I have to side with Davis and Figueredo. Even in wins, I, I, I'm not going to play a bunch of Rob Font unless Figueredo just can't take a shot anymore and he's kind of burnt out, goes the uh, goes the Peter Jan school of of. I was going to say, that champions. doesn't happen too often when guys go up and they get burnt out, but Peter Jan's a great yeah, so example. I'm going to see what happens, but I am going to side with the former flyaway king, Davison. Figueredo. And I'm really sad about this next fight. I'm I'm really sad. We got Sean Brady. He's 8200, taking on Kelvin Gastelum at 8000. Sean Brady's minus 125. Gastelum minus 105. They're right in that pick'em range with Brady being a slight favorite. Why am I sad? Because Kelvin Gastelum finally goes to the right weight class, and I can't make all the jokes I like to make about him wanting to eat tacos rather than cut weight. The dude <laughs> should have been. At Walter Waite for the longest time. He did it in between Christmas and Thanksgiving. Kudos. Yeah, I mean, granted, he he got to a middleweight title shot, but bro, you're a Walter Waite. Yeah. I mean, whatever, I I, I guess. I I shouldn't harp on it because we're here at 170 and a really interesting fight against Sean Brady. Oh, this is my fight to take first. Um, Look, Sean Brady just lost to Bilal Muhammad. I don't want to sound like a Bilal hater. Bilal is good. Do I think he's boring? Yes. But the fact that Bilal finished Sean the way he did, I think says more about Sean Brady than it does about Bilal Muhammad. And again, I'm not being a Bilal hater. Bilal is a really good top five fighter. I, My opinion. I, the fact that finishing people like that had me has me concerned. Because if Bilal's going to finish you in the feet, Kelvin guys, Kelvin, Kelvin Gastelum is going to give you the Michael Bisping treatment and take one of your eyes. Like I know Kelvin's striking style is pretty basic. That that one two that he t- tends to spam, but it is effective. He's got a wrestling background. Um, doesn't use it all the time, but Brady needs a takedown. I think he is in a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble. And really, that step that step up against Bilal, what we we haven't seen him since then. I I can't straight up pick Sean Brady. I'll play him in, in, in some GPPs, but I think um, Bilal, Bilal, I think Kelvin with the uh, used to facing bigger, stronger guys, I don't know how much success wrestling that Brady's going to have. And now I have no confidence in him on the feet against a good striker. Give me Kelvin Gastelum. I think he's viable in all formats, and I'll probably be underweight to Sean Brady, who Kind of put up a shut up time. I, I I just I'm I'm not quite a believer after that last performance. What do you got, Monk? I know you sound like a Bilal hater to me. I don't I don't know. I don't. Know. Oh God. <laughs> I, I mean, no, I, I agree. I, I like. I don't ask I like Bilal, Bilal. Or he's going to accuse me of being a racist. That That's the true. whole you see we said the whole thing about about Colby Covington. Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, bro, Dana White does not care. Right. If, if anybody just does not give a fuck about any of that politically correct stuff, it's Dana. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the reason is that you're not finishing people or good enough on the microphone. Although I could argue he's taking a page out of the Colby book to get better on the microphone and more attention. To though, even though he's not an exciting fighter, he's going to start getting shots. Which could be what he's doing. That's true, but he so, also deserves those right. shots based on merit as well. They're Colby just or not. 
come a uh, ball. They're just not coming to him. So uh, it is it is interesting. I mean, he's a nothing but dominate everyone he's fought since Le- uh, Leon Edwards. But yeah, that's kind of crazy. You don't have to love him or hate him, but you can't call him a shitty fighter. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, as not as you. Very, I don't mean you. Very clear. Good fighter. Yeah. Not super exciting, but there's fine. There's a ton of those guys. Yep. Just... Beat him. We'll, we'll if you want to shut him up, beat him. Like, you know what I like? Beat his style. He's a very one dimensional fighter. Well, until the Sean Brady fight, beat him. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, which, uh, which is why I'm so it's tripping me out about Brady. Yeah, I don't know. You made some good points. I think I picked Sean Brady when I did my notes this morning. I'll, I'll stick with it. But I did also mention I thought this fight was extremely close. Um, and you nailed it. It's Sean Brady needs a takedown. As long as this fight stays on the feet, Sean Brady's probably in trouble. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty simple breakdown for me. I think these are the two closest salaried fighters on the entire card. So you can get either one of them into your lineups, no problem. But I do think this is a fight that you should target. Not like go. I don't think it's my number one fight to target, but I think it is you know, in the handful of fights that I would like to target. Uh, I don't have a problem with either one of them in cash. Um, probably Gastelum, my favor a little bit more just because of the size and uh, and the salary you are saving 200 bucks. But I don't mind either in GPP as well because I think the winner is really going to look good. Like it's either going to be Gastelum on the feet and he could score, you know, 90 some points in a, in a decision win a la Ian Heinish. Or it could be Brady with rinse and repeat takedowns, of which Kelvin Gastelum can get up. But if he gets taken down once, it could just happen again and again, so Brady could score well also. So play this fight. My official pick is Sean Brady, um, but I think it's going to be close and a damn good fight. Should be a problem. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about... Where is it? Oh, Joaquin Silva, 9,100, taking on Clay Guida. At 7,100, line on this fight. Silva's minus 325. Guida is plus 260. Monk, you're first. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. I, I'm on the Silva side, and I have been all week. Um, he looked, he had, again, I mentioned it earlier, he had moments against uh, one of our main event guys here, Armin Sarukian, that people were very surprised with. You know what I mean? Uh, he held a good account of himself for a few minutes of that fight. And it was on extremely short notice as well against one of the up and coming guys in the division. So kudos to him for taking the fight and staying in there for as long as he did. Like I said, he staggered this guy. So, I mean, uh, it's not nothing. And now he's fighting Clay Guida, who is almost, in fact, he'll be 42 years old uh, on December 8th. So a week from the moment we're recording this podcast, Clay Guida will be 42 years old. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going Silva here. He is eight years younger um i i think he's a decent pivot in cash games i like him to get the win would i be surprised if guida won no but i i think i think silva's i think he can get this one done and score well at 9100 i wouldn't be playing this one in gpp tournaments i don't mind it a little bit in cash maybe guida in cash just because of the slate breaking potential at the salary but again guida has not made an optimal lineup in any of his last six fights and silva's only made one out of his last three which i think would have been the jesse ronson fight in which he still didn't score 100 points so silva's a lot to ask but that's why i don't like it for gpp's just maybe in cash and uh yeah this one uh could be interesting i just don't know who who to trust less is my problem here Trust the guy less who's 9,100. I'm going to make a case yeah. for our plus 265 dog here. Um, yep. Not not all chalk on the podcast. Look, Joaquin Silva's won one fight in the last four years. It was Jesse Ronson. I'm going to lay juice on that. And he's shown he can be taken down. It's, looks like good things for old man Clay. Um, the thing about picking Clay, Clay Guida is the wheels could absolutely fall off at any minute. Like right. well, father time is undefeated. I acknowledge that. I'm saying if he stays up, if he if he doesn't get knocked out, the pressure he's going to put on Silva, the takedowns he's going to relentlessly go he's going to relentlessly go for. To me, it feels like Silva needs to either get a KO coming in or catch him in a guillotine, which Guida over over his career just repeatedly gets gets caught in. Um, Eleven I, sub losses. Yeah. Here. I, I think I think Guida is going to win the minutes in this fight, which is concerning. But at 7,100, give me a guy who's going to win the minutes, and I just need him to not get finished. That's where I'm going to go. Silva's super expensive at 9,100. 
he's like a secondary option in GPPs on DraftKings, but I think the value is on Guida mm-hmm. against a guy who's won one fight in four years and needs a finish, it, it seems like. So I'm taking the risk in that, like I said, Guida at any point could show up like and look like Tony Ferguson trying to, you know, I got I, I, I don't want to break that. The Tony Ferguson fight, it's just <laughs> sad. So yeah. at, at any point that could happen, but I, to me, Guida wins the minutes, and I'm going to take a shot here with the dog play as my pick. Moving on, let's talk about Pudahele Soriano at 9,400, taking on Dustin Stoltzfus at 6,800. Line on the fight, Soriano is minus 340. Stoltzfus is plus 270. Uh, unlike the last fight, I, I really I, I can't make – too much of a case for uh, Punahale for sorry for Stoltzfus. Punahale should win here. I, I'm just I don't think Stoltzfus is very good. Soriano is a big, powerful striker. The only way I could see Stoltzfus winning is if he manages to turn this into a grappling match, shoots takedowns, and tires Soriano out. Makes maybe gets a takedown. I just I just think there's imminent danger any minute this is on the feet. Soriano's minus 155 to win inside the distance. I know you got Bellato and Reese are, are both higher, but I, I, Soriano feels safe. Honestly, I just I don't see a lot of danger in Stoltz, but I don't think he's very good. I think Soriano's a big, powerful striker who's going to you know eat him up. That's my read in this fight. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, Monk, do you agree? Am I missing something? What do you got for Soriano Stoltz? No, I agree. I'll keep it short here. I think Stolzfus is uh, terrible. His only win in his last five is Dwight Grant. Uh, Puna, I mean, hasn't looked great, especially losing to Nick Maximov is never good, but losing to no. Allen and Kopilov isn't the worst thing ever. But he clearly has a problem with cardio. That said, if I if this goes past 90 seconds, I'd honestly be surprised. Soriano, my favorite 9K fighter in cash and GPP, doesn't matter. He'll be in a ton of my lineups. Uh, for the most part, and really anything over 5% Stolzfus seems, um, you know, ultimate contrarian play. So, yeah, give me Puna Soriano, finish this dude in uh, in no time, basically. I'm hoping for, I mean, quick win bone, it's got to be in play here, right? Yes. That is enough time talking about that fight. That's, whew. Let's move on. Let's talk about the cupcake. Misha yeah. Tate. I don't care that she's a dog. I'm mentioning her first. She's 7,500. Take it mm-hmm. on Julia Avila. Avila is 8,700. Line on this fight is Avila's minus 140. Tate at plus 110. So this feels like a little bit of line value too. Uh, Mung, is your first, this is your fight first. I won't steal your thunder between the new mom, Julia Avila, and the cupcake, Misha Tate. Well, I'm picking the new mom, Julia Avila. Um, I'm picking yeah. her over Tate uh, here for sure. That said, I'm not confident, and you shouldn't touch this fight in DraftKings. You should not be betting on this fight. Um, that's it. That's, that's really it. I mean, Tate has lost, uh, four of her last five, uh, only beating like a 42 year old Marion Renault before, right before she retired. Um, and Julia Avila has beaten Stoli Renko, Gina Mazzani and Penny count. So yeah, both, this is, uh, in my opinion, yeah, one of them is a former champion. You know, we don't take that away from her, uh, and they're both competitors, but this seems pretty low level. Uh, between uh, uh, ranked fighters. So, yeah, give me Avila here. I just don't think – I don't trust Tate at all, and I think uh, too many people are making too much out of Avila's absence, pregnancy, um, and hair color, to be completely honest. So give me Julia Avila to get it done by decision over Tate. I mean, I don't know you could say we're making too much of it. I mean, don't go crazy, but the, the, the track record of new moms returning, you know, fighting for the first time is, is, is not a good one. It's not one I want to – put money behind uh I, I agree with the overall assessment though this is not a a fight to target heavily on Warren murphy I'll landed 102 off. strikes on misha tate's face yeah <laughs> that's all you have to say <laughs> yeah. so what julia vila needs to do is go forward and press the pace much like lauren murphy if this if this fight plays out technically at range misha tate wins that fight if avila needs to use pressure go forward maybe some clinch just be be first if Avila's and this is what this is why I'm picking Misha Tate is that I think that's the way that you kind of kind of led me into it. Avila needs to be first, and I'm a believer in ring rust, kind of getting your rhythm. And I don't think my guess 
way I read it is I don't think that Avila is going to be able to do that. It's going to be a close fight. And I also think the value side is Tate. So that's why, why I lean the, lean the pick there. But Avila, absolutely. If she can come out aggressive and be on, be on the uh, front foot, she'll be fine and, and she'll win the fight. It's not one I'm super confident in, but those are the reasons why I'm leaning towards Misha Tate. And for DraftKings, I lean towards Misha Tate because she's cheaper. And this fight not going to be a great one for DraftKings. That's simple. Kind of seems like a pretty straightforward fight. Would you rather me. have Misha at 75 or save 100 and play Figgy? Figgy. Yeah. Figgy. <laughs> Figgy. <laughs> I mean, should be like 20% less owned, though, for whatever that's worth. Yeah, no, you're you. Yep, that is true. It is worth something. Absolutely. So. Let's move on and talk about somebody who's ain't worth a you know fucking shit's worth of a nickel. Fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> All right, not you, not the A side of this fight. Zach Reese is ninety three hundred. Take it on Cody Brundage at sixty nine hundred. Line on, uh, yeah, the line on the fight. We got Cody Brundage is plus one eighty five. Zach Reese is the fav- The favorite is minus two twenty five. Uh, Cody Brundage is only in the UFC because he held his head and said, ow, 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 and got Jacob Malkoon disqualified. He was getting his ass whooped in that fight. It was going to be his fourth straight UFC loss and um, pulled a stunt. Like, plain and simple. I know it was only one round in that fight, but he he was getting his ass kicked. Um, So... That being said, how does this fight play out? Zach Reese is a newcomer. It's a little bit concerning. Um, does not face high-level competition. But Cody Brundage, like, I know he beat Trayshawn Gore, but he also lost to Nick Maximoff. He beat Dalka Champion. The dude is, he just doesn't look good. He does not look good. He looks disinterested. I thought it was funny. Like, his corner was screaming at him last fight. He wasn't doing anything they asked for. He got himself He got himself the DQ win. I I can't pick a guy like that. I just, I just can't. I'll have a little bit of him in GPPs because of the, um, the experience factor that I mentioned. Zach Reese being really new, but I think Zach Reese will be able to hold himself grappling. I just, I don't think Cody Brendage he hasn't looked any kind of good, and losing is a habit. And yeah, he got the win last fight. Dude's on a four fight losing streak, and he knows that. Uh, I don't think he's going to deal with the pressure really well. I just, he's got a good matchup for it, but. I can't get behind any. I can't get behind a Cody Brundage pick. I can't do it. I won't let a Cody Brundage win ruin my night on DraftKings because I've let that happen before, and I won't do it again. So give me Zach Reese. Seems like a pretty straightforward play. What do you got, Monk? Yeah, I mean Cody Brundage did pull a stunt, but <clears throat> and I'm not defending him, but he did take no less than 37 shots to the back of the head during that entire fight. So I he agree, was he was getting he his was ass absolutely kicked. Absolutely fine. I, I mean, he was getting his ass kicked, and the ref should either call all of those shots or none of them. I agree with all of this, but he did take a ton of shots to the back of the head. Um, that said, this is completely disrespectful. For a guy that's had several UFC fights, Zach Reese, this dude has six professional fights, six, and he has one of the worst strength of schedules I've ever seen while I've been doing this. Two fights ago, he fought a dude who's now four and 12, four and 12, uh, four fights ago. He fought a guy with no fights at all, zero and zero record. And the fight before that, the guy was like, oh, and three basically. So, or oh, and two. Um, long story short, yes, Zachary should win because ultimately Cody Brundage either is going to gilly you or hit you with some crazy punch in the first 90 seconds, or he's going to give up and not want to be in there anymore. And the other guy's going to win. So therefore play both sides of this fight. But I honestly think Cody Brundage should stand a much better chance than people are giving him credit for that said, it's all because of his actions that people are saying this. So I completely understand both sides. But I am going to pick uh, Cody Brundage outright. I don't uh, want to play Zach Reese at 9,300, even though in a win he probably scores well. But, I mean, if he only lands a couple shots and then knocks this dude down uh, or or standing TKO, he's only going to score 90-some, and he's not going to pay off the salary. So give me Brundage. I think the upside is way higher for Brundage in a win. Um, and unless he quits, which is completely possible, he should have a good showing, a, a good chance at a good showing. So... Play both sides in GPP. Don't play this in cash other than maybe the Brundage side if you need a punt. And, uh, yeah, that's it. 
feel free to dm me if you want me to yell anything from the stands at cody brundage oh i mean i got one for you there you go could you please tell cody brundage the best thing he does every week is pin amanda bobby cooper Once yeah there you go <laughs> that's a it's a bit wordy but i think i can make it happen i mean play with that in your two and a half hour drive Just something along those lines let I it marinate it's, it's the only good thing he does every week i i the, the stunt he pulled is just you know that was ridic- of, it was ridiculous it just it's no bueno no. all right let's move on let's talk about Dracar close who's 8300 take it on joe selecki who is 7900 the line in this fight we got Selecki actually close to favorite, minus 130. Selecki at plus 110. Monk, your first who you got. Yeah, I actually don't have much for this. I'm going to pick the underdog because he's cheaper. Um, but really, neither guy scores well in a win. Obviously, if they're fighting guys that have no business in the UFC, like Brandon, the human highlight reel Jenkins, or Carl Deaton the third, yeah, they score well. But other than that, they're either losing or putting up 57 points in a win. Or, uh, or you know, 68 points in a win, 70. It's just not worth it, man. I mean, flip a coin for cash if you need somebody here. But I'd rather have a side of the uh, 8,200 uh, Sean Brady and whoever the hell Sean Brady's fighting, Kevin Gastelum, um, other than this fight. So I'm picking Selecki because I've got a few underdogs on this card. I think he's got a good chance. Would I be surprised if close one? No. But I'm not investing a ton on this fight because, A, I don't know how it's going to play out other than it likely goes to a decision. And, uh, B, I don't think it scores well. So give me Selecki, um, probably field weight or a bit under on both sides. Let me talk you into a little bit more Dracar close. Not a time I can, be, I can be swayed here. Swayed. Swayed? So yeah. It, it's not so much that you're right. And on the surface, I don't get the warm fuzzies in terms of scoring. And I'm not saying go go crazy. I think I want to be at least field weight on Dracar close because Selecki, even against some of these guys that aren't great, he seems to always have to work his way out of trouble. Like okay, he's been yeah. he's been in these spots where he'll get knocked down or he'll get hurt, and he's can he can work his way back and get a takedown and be fine. Dracar close, not the best UFC fighter, but a solid not legit Carl UFC Deaton fighter. <laughs> right. And, and I, I don't think he's gonna let Selecki off the hook. If Selecki turns up the way he has been. I think close is live for a finish that is one of those finishes where you're like, the fuck did that happen? I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, and, and the fact that everyone's on Selecki, I, I I mean, not everybody, but I'm looking at our, I'll give you a peep inside the DFS army um, projections, which by the way, link down below, sign up live now. Yep. Go and go and check that out. Uh, the project, the projected ownership, Selecki is projected is projected at thirty percent and close to twenty four percent. Oh my god! Okay, so that makes me want to be backwards on that for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. That that thirty percent for Joe Selecki. What? Well, the problem is in that range. You got a v. You got the Avila Tate fight. Okay. Um, no, thank you. Right. Uh, uh, Horth and Hardy. We still have no, to talk thank about. You. I mean, you want exposure there, and then you got. Brady Gastelum, which is a fight to target, but and that's not an all-in fight, right? And that's and those are your four cheapest fights. You got to get ownership down there. That's true. So I mean, let's say wow. to go all in, it's kind of it's building into kind of a stars and scrubs week or maybe a three hundred dog week, um, because there are you know picked a couple dogs that got a, I think it got at least one more coming. So I'll have a little mm-hmm. bit of Dracar close here for those reasons. That just suck. He's been hurt before. And I'm not even going to fade Selecki. Like 30% is too much, but I'll be 15 ish, yeah. 20% probably. Might be because of the ACL, too. Close coming back from an ACL surgery. That's right. So I've heard, I, I could should, be. I should mention that. So um, I, I'm going That's with high, Dracar high close, ownership. It's, 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 this is unfortunately a fight that that's, uh, I'm going to have more of than I want. And like I said, I'm just going to lean towards close, but it it is a mm-hmm. lean. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the next fight. We got the most expensive and the least expensive fighter on the cards, Rodolfo Bellato and Ihor Poteria. Bellato, 9,600. Poteria, 6,600. Line on this fight. Um, Bellato, minus 425. Poteria is plus 330. Um, I will say this. 
Porteria is not the deadest, least expensive fighter on the card um, that we've seen. There's some weeks you just you just skate right by this person. You don't want to play him at all. Mm. And while I do favor Bellato, he is the pick. Porteria comes out like a man on fire, and it's going to try and knock your head off in the first two minutes. Comes out quick. Bellato is making his UFC debut. So Porteria is actually live for the quick KO. If he doesn't get it, though, Bellato is better. We'll take over. Um, I think Quateria gasses, Bellato can get takedowns, land his own big strikes. There's plenty where Bellato's better. But the way Porteria fights and the fact that Bellato's making his debut gives the underdog just that puncher's chance that they, we ha- I have to mention here. But Bellato, for me, is the pick. How about for you, Monk? Yeah, I won't take much time. I think that's exactly it. Pateria is a decent punt play. He's not the deadest, uh, like you said, underdog on the entire card. So, yeah, I think he's an okay punt play. You can literally get to anybody else you want. Also, if you're like me, you have a hard time paying the most expensive salary for a guy that we've never seen fight in the UFC cage. So that also brings uh, a problem for me personally. I'll likely, I want to see his ownership, and we're not going to give out too many of them uh, on the show. That's why you got to be sure to get to DFSArmy.com and check those out because they are extremely important, guys, when we are A, building lineups and B losing fights. So now there's only what 11 or 12, I think it's 12 fights because ownerships become ever more important. So be sure to check that out. I want to personally see what it is. Cause I want to look to go maybe slightly under Bellato. Um, But yeah, Pateria decent pump play. Okay. Pump play. Um, But overall, I'm, I mean, I'm not too excited uh, about this one. I like other nine K guys more that said Bellato could come out here and, and just wipe the floor with Pateria. So don't X him out just because he's expensive. You know, I just realized it, because because of the week off, I didn't even get a chance to uh, victory lap. I, I took first and second two weeks ago in the five dollar, and I was oh, I was that, wow, I, nice. Yeah, it was a cool seven thousand and change off mm-hmm. my seven fifty there. I was sweating though because, uh, you know, competitor boy whoever, um, Big T had the same lineup solo in the big contest. Uh huh. Oh motherfucker! Don't don't tell me it. I didn't. It didn't make my my. I, you know, I don't play one fifty in the big contest anymore. It's just it's too much cash. I, right. I just, it is. I'm just not there. But he had it solo, and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. And Brendan Allen gets the finish, and I'm like, oh fuck, did I just right. miss out on my share? He did, but Brendan Allen didn't score enough because it was a third round finish. If he gets it in the second yep. round, Big T ships it. Yeah. And, yep. and and I felt better in that. While that happened, he didn't win the big contest. I still went to first and second in the $5. I'm like, look at that contest there selection. You go. All right. Exactly. Pays off. Pays off. I, don't, I don't feel so shit. And that was an interesting lineup. It was like 88, 87, 86, 85. That was 78. Oh, it was the cheapest fight. It was, um, I only had like, in my 150, I only had like five or six uh, Sarah Gee lineups. Oh, like wow. I was way, like, and that's but, wild. The two, but two of them that I had, I got first and second. Yeah, it was 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, and then Jacob Saregi at 6,900. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Well, oh, well geez. done. Well done. So withdrew most of that and paid off some bills and back at it again this week. There you go. We got life three of, events life left. Of a real, life of a real grinder. I'm not going to exactly. go reinvest that money like in Chase. Now <laughs> I can't do the big contest. No, I'm going to go pay some fucking bills. Right. Yeah. Get that's back in that five dollar. That's what boys. That's what life is, boys and girls. Yep. Yep. All right. We let's can't all be on. the great Gatsby. Some of yeah. us just try to be great. I mean, basically, I'm going to just infer that you just called me Leonardo DiCaprio. That's that's how I choose to take that on. Great you Gatsby. should. He's 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 fantastic. <laughs> Moving on. Two fights left. For Wellington Terman. He's nine thousand. Take it on Jared Gooden. He's seventy two hundred. Terman is minus 190. The comeback on Gooden is plus 160. I'm glad you're first for this one. I'm interested to see what your take is. Who you got, Monk? Uh, well, I tweeted this earlier, and I stand by it. Anyone that says, choo-choo, baby, after they make weight, I can't back. So, Jared Gooden, uh, I'm, I'm putting all my money on Wellington Terman now. Night uh, train. Come on. Night train. I, yeah, night train. Um, Mr. Night Train has missed his stop in one out of the past five or four out of his past five fights. Beating only Nicholas Stoltz, 
who may or may not be worse or better than Dustin Stolzfus. Uh, undecided on that one. Wellington Terman is a decent fighter. He's relatively one-dimensional, and he never moves forward. Never move your back row, ever. That's <laughs> Wellington Terman. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how this fight's going to go. It could be good and early, which is why I don't mind him. Another uh, punt play. And, in fact, uh, all jokes aside, and I really don't like doing this, this is a low-level fight in my opinion so it could go either way gooden has been in and out of the ufc uh has lost all four of his uh last four losses have been uh decision losses so keep that in mind and we're in texas known for its judging fuckery um so yeah i'm actually gonna pick gooden to get it done in the first round if that doesn't happen uh terman's likely gonna win by decision i'd like to avoid most of this fight for dfs except for maybe some gooden and gpps but Terman does not interest me in cash as he 81 points against Sirkinov, 74 against Smiling Sam Alvey, and averages 78 over his career. So, yeah, not interested in him. Slight interest in Gooden for GPPs. And I'm choo actually choo, gonna, baby. It's choo choo, baby. I'm actually going to pick Gooden straight up, even though I said I you can't. You just said you him. couldn't do it. And now you I are. just said I couldn't, but I also can't back Wellington Terman. So, this fight, it might, it might end up being awesome because both guys are terrible. So, yeah. I'll just be contrarian and pick good. Yeah, I'm going to go with Terman. I'll stay on the chalk side. I don't have much interest in GPPs. I don't, you, neither guy to me has got a ton of finishing potential. I think Terman's going to be able to control this fight in the clinch, move forward mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, that does seem to be the best part of his game is the, the, the clinch game, which is interesting. You don't see that a whole lot. He's more likely to get takedowns on the feet. Gooden's live for that reason. I can't tell you this is a super confident pick. But I'm going to go with Terman here. Just good. And like you said, one and four in the UFC. I think he's going to come up short again. Terman, though, isn't is a good opponent for him. I just the biggest the biggest skill gap to me is in the clinch. So I'm going to go with Terman. But it's not a fight. I'm interested in DraftKings. And for me, it's a pass betting wise. Just I'm just not interested. No, thank you. Yep. No, thank you. That being said, let's talk about the first fight of the card. Our last fight of the podcast. I think I just fucked up my notes somewhere, typing somewhere. Oops. <laughs> oh, well, I'll fix that later. Jamie Lynn Horth. She's 8,500. Taking on Veronica Macedo. Stop. Veronica Hardy now at 7,700. <laughs> uh, line on this fight. Uh, Horth is minus 190. Hardy is plus 160. God, there's value on Veronica Hardy. They're, they're, they're damn just, right there is just is you're um, damn right look oh, in a horse win she probably scores shit on draft kings anyway let's start there hardy's got more ufc experience if anyone's going to grapple and get control time it is her the problem is i don't know which fucking veronica hardy's going to show up she could look really good or she can look like she has no business in the octagon um so i'm not slamming either one of these two in but I, I get some more value on the Hardy side and the fact that she's the one who will grapple and is more experienced that pushes me that way in the pick. I, I still don't, to me, the jury is still way, way out on Jamie Lynn Horth. She, she beat Haley Cowan last time out the last time out. Cool. Like if, if the best Veronica Hardy shows up that we've seen, she wins. I just don't trust her is the problem, but I still have to pick her and, 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 the line's going the opposite way I think it should. So now I'm like, shit, do I bet Veronica Hardy at um at, at plus 160? I, I start to really consider it. Like, really consider it. So Veronica Hardy is the pick. That's where I think the value is. And I'll finish my picks for this card with an underdog play. Monk, who you got? Love it. Veronica Hardy is who I like. And I've seen everyone except for you, basically. Picking Jamie Lynn Horth, and they're saying things like, oh, <sighs> Veronica Hardy beat Juliana Miller. Who the fuck's Juliana Miller? She's terrible. And Veronica Hardy looked terrible. But well, who the fuck is Haley Cohen, bro? Who is Haley Cohen? Like, she's not one of the Cohen brothers. I don't think she directed No Country for Old Men. So who the fuck is she? Um, Veronica Hardy, meanwhile, like you said perfectly, yeah, she has L's on her record, and the Bea Malecki one might be one of the most egregious, so I can't defend that specific one, but that all adds up to a ton of fight time. Just in her last five fights, guys, almost an hour in the cage. 
Um, so I'm going with Veronica Hardy. She looked, and yes, it was against Juliana Miller, but guess what? She had four years out of the cage. She only can fight who they put in front of her, and she did exactly what she was supposed to do against someone of that you know caliber of fighter in in Juliana Miller. She dominated her and made it look easy for the most part when a lot of people were let's let's be honest a lot of you were picking juliana killer miller in that fight because i, did. I remember i yeah, a lot of people did. did a lot of people did and i wasn't like a huge veronica hardy person i sound much more passionate about it now but uh back then i wasn't <clears throat> excuse me just because she's married last thing i'll say just because she's married to dan hardy people i think think that she's like some 35 year old fighter she is 28 years old she just turned 28 years old guy she is learning and getting better literally this, every this day is the slow clap for dan hardy yeah oh, yeah yeah for sure for sure talk about out kicking your fucking coverage i mean geez that's the definition Probably. just a picture of him in that in that dictionary for sure uh but yeah long story short i'm picking hardy i like her here yeah could she come out here and look terrible of course there's that possibility but again, it's Jamie Lynn Horth. I need to see more from her. And Hardy definitely impressed me. So I think we're going to get the Hardy that's out. That's I think we're getting the different Hardy, man. I just have a feeling. I want her to shut everybody up. And uh, I'm really looking forward to a win here. So give me Veronica Hardy uh, over Horth. And I think 160 is a fantastic fucking number. And let's see it get to 180. Let's see it get to 180. If it, no, if it gets to 180, I, I will have Holy to Holy shit and yeah there's a huge size difference all right i i don't care i don't care veronica hardy let's go team veronica all right let's oh, talk veronica about hardy so hot <laughs> veronica vaughn god damn it i know and we are really <laughs> dating ourselves there's exactly <laughs> some millennials out there going what the fuck are these two old motherfuckers talking about right yeah just 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 do me a favor. Go watch Billy Madison. Watch the cinematic it. masterpiece, Billy Madison. It's, it's, it's underrated. <laughs> it is. No, it is. <laughs> All right, let's talk kill shots. Kill shots, boys and girls. If you don't know what a kill shot is, welcome to the show. Hit the like button. DFS Army links below. Sign it up. Kill shot is an under-owned play. Typically a dog, but it's DraftKings specific. Doesn't have to be an underdog, but somebody who's not going to get a lot of ownership who could break the slate. I went first last, last time. Monk, I'll let you go first this time. Hopefully you can go first. I have two in my head already. Now you can go because there's no way you're taking mine. So go ahead. Okay. Well, the first one, I, I originally was coming into the show and I was going to pick Brundage, but I just hyped myself up so goddamn much with Veronica Hardy. Good, get off I, am Brundage. Picking, I am picking Veronica Hardy as my, uh, as my kill shot. I think she's going to come out here and surprise everyone. Head kick from hell. First fight of the night early celebration for her and mr dan hardy i'm saying veronica hardy kill shot seventy seven hundred dollars let's go i was really hoping i did a quick google and, and i don't even know i couldn't even keep weight classes straight or any of that i was hoping there's going to be a relation between our kill shots for the, for the first time i was hoping that dan hardy had fought old man clay guida at some point oh that wouldn't have been <laughs> but, possible but 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 i but it, it doesn't Quick Google said that 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 never did happen. Well, he I must be the only guy Clay Guida didn't fight. Is it the right weight class though? Where, no, I think class? Hardy's Hardy's yeah, welterweight. Much, yeah, much higher. Yeah, yeah. That would have been good though. So clearly, yeah, my kill shot good. is Clay Guida, the carpenter with his hair bouncing all over the place. He Glad cut it, bro. Does yeah. Do you want to rethink your pick? Do I want to rethink it? He cut his hair. It's not bouncing anywhere. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know what? In my head, though, it'll always be that's bouncing. That's true. Well, that's what I said. I go, I get to see Clay's bouncing hair in live and in person. And then I saw the picture and I was like, and I just didn't remember that he'd cut it before even before the last fight. Yeah. He I, still goes way, like I this. Wanted, yeah. I, I wanted to pick Figueredo, but that's it's Yeah, that's a good chalky. one. It's that's too chalky. Yep. I don't think it qualifies. I think it's a chalk underdog. I play. agree. Mm -hmm. So will land on clay guida that's what we got for ufc austin monk save travels tomorrow everybody thanks for joining thanks for dealing with my voice and coughing and all that sound great happy horse shit uh, don't lie to me my wife does that no you no. sound good for real no, i'm getting over something too we probably sound normal oh it's it, it's everybody's got it bro everybody it's going around does it see i i just feel i got i got this is my daughter had one of those elementary school colds and I, yep. I was good. And then she gets over it and I'm like, all right, I made it. 
That's how nope. it is. Nope. <laughs> then you get it. Didn't make <laughs> it at he's all. He's ready to play. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So UFC Austin, Saruki and Dariush. That's what we got. Hit the like button. Let's get the fuck out of here. Good luck in those contests. We will see you next time.